Dear my epilepsy fellows around the world, this is Tracy Yu here, sharing a case from Taipei Veterans General Hospital in Taipei, Taiwan. It's my greatest honor to share this 48-year-old man with episodic violent movement during sleep. First, let's take a look at his history and epilepsy evaluations. Mr. Xie is a right-handed man who graduated from elementary school with low academic performance. He currently runs a laundromat. According to history taking, the first seizure onset is at the age of 10. He suddenly went running and shouting in the flag hoisting ceremony at school. His seizure patterns include aura of fear and dizziness. Two patterns of seizure were identified. One pattern is screaming, eye staring. The other pattern involves random bizarre movements such as biting, grasping, and running around. The duration of two patterns are generally between 10 seconds to 1 to 2 minutes. There seems to be awareness impairment, and the seizure only happens in midnight or during sleep, such as noon nap. Seizure frequency varies from 10 feet in a month to less than 5 feet per month. Tracing back his clinical course, he originally followed up at outpatient clinic in other hospitals. He took anti-seizure medications, but seizure control was not satisfactory. Therefore, he came to Taipei Veteran General Hospital in 2008 for medication management. He has been admitted for a three-day video EEG for seizure characterization. Later, he was admitted again for pre-surgical, pre-vagus nerve stimulation evaluation. VNS implantation surgery was arranged in December 2021. Throughout all the evaluation, Scope EEG findings were unremarkable, except for the first admission. Into Italy, there were continuous spikes over the right frontal temporal region. Let's look at the inter EEG of his first admission in 2013. This is an anterior posterior bipolar montage. From the top to bottom is left parasagittal, right parasagittal, left temporal, right temporal, and midline. There are spikes with after coming slow in the right temporal region. Phase reversal is at the F8 electro. Sometimes the spikes are restricted to right temporal region. Sometimes it involves the parasagittal electrodes. On the next epoch of inter EEG, we see similar spike with after coming slow in the frontal temporal region. However, due to the unremarkable finding of neural imaging, Semiology did not suggest a right temporal onset, so the patient did not receive further surgical intervention in 2013. The patient continued follow-up at the outpatient clinic. Subsequent scope EEG were mostly normal, except for one-time finding of independent spikes at bad lateral regions in 2018. Through the above-mentioned evaluations, lesion localization could not be made. The patient was admitted in 2021 again for a pre-surgical evaluation due to medication poor control and frequent fits. Regarding the patient's other medical history and social history, he is otherwise healthy except for epilepsy. Neurological examination were all normal. There was no previous CNS infection, no head trauma in his childhood. He does smoke cigarettes for one pack per day in the past 13 years. In terms of birth history, it was an uneventful, spontaneous delivery at full term. His birth weight was within the normal range. The patient has two brothers and one sister. There is no epilepsy history in his siblings, parents, and grandparents. During Mr. Xie's admission in 2021, he was on clobazam, vopril acid, oscabazepam. Previously, he has tried several anti-seizure medications, including levateracetam, lamotrigine, topiramate, and lacosamide. So now, let's take a look at the semiology we recorded in 2021. We've identified two seizure patterns, and we'll go through each pattern respectively. Note that the faces of coming semiology videos are swapped and modified. The first ICTO involves predominantly movement of the upper extremities in his upper body. We can see that he's initially asleep. He opens his eyes. 
and adjust his head a little bit. Head turning to left. He stretches himself. Looking toward left and then looking toward his right. Suddenly violent arm raising. He cries loudly. He extends his arms and looks at his wife, but does not seem to have meaningful exchange. Right hand automatism. There is anger look on his face. I wish somebody had verbally challenged him, but he seems to be unaware. His left hand touches his chest. Due to the face modification, we lost some features on the face. But in this original video screenshot, we see a clear ectopouting, which is thought to be a sign of seizure from the frontal lobe. Then let's check out the second pattern. We see both the patient and his wife are asleep. He wakes up and makes a turn. A sudden, bizarre, violent movement is coming. He gets up and smashes on his face. Even though he's looking at his wife, the patient does not have meaningful interactions with others. What do you The verbal output yeah. is not meaningful. He turns around and falls back into sleep. With these two seizure patterns on our mind, moving along, let's see what are the findings in scope EEG. Let's check out the interetal EEG first. Again, this is an anterior-posterior bipolar montage. From the up to bottom is left parasagittal, right parasagittal, left temporal, right temporal, and midline. It's an epoch during sleep on non-REM sleep stage two. At the 10th second on this epoch, there is a shock wave with actor coming slow in the right. If we change the montage to A1, A2 reference montage, we see a positive shock wave at right parasagittal due to A2 contamination, indicating an epilepsy discharge of spike at right temporal region. Let us take a look at another interital EEG. It's an anterior posterior montage again. In the first six seconds, the patient appeared to be in sleep. In the seventh second, there's a spike with after coming slow in the right temporal region. And subsequently, myogenic artifact was noticed in the left temporalis muscle. In another interictal EEG, in this epoch, the patient was also in non-REM sleep stage two. There was minimal myogenic artifact, some sleep spindles in the frontal region. And here we notice a spike with after coming slow in the right temporal region. Next, we move on to ICTO EEGs. We recall that the ICTO-1, the patient raised his both arms, got up, and fell back to the bed. This is an anterior-posterior bipolar montage. On this epoch, we can see the patient's heart rate is around 72 beats per minute. The patient is asleep at stage 2. 
We see the patient suddenly woke up from sleep in the ninth second, and half a second before he woke up, there was a spike with actually coming slow in the right temporal lobe region. If we change the montage into A1, A2 reference montage, we see a similar A2 contamination effect, a positive spike in the right parasitical region. Moving along the subsequent page, we can see only myogenic artifacts and movement artifacts. Not much information for localization can be identified. Aside from the artifacts, we see the EKG down the bottom show a heart rate of 138 beats per minute. When his ICTO resolved, the EEG gradually returned to baseline. In ICTO 2, he woke up and got up in bed. He suddenly made a turn and smashed down in his face. For ICTO 2, let's begin 10 seconds prior to his events. This is an anterior posterior bipolar montage. The patient was in sleep. It's non-REM sleep stage 2. There was not much myogenic artifact on this epoch. A small sharp spikes may be identified. On this epoch before the event, there is bilateral attenuation of EEG. Following, there is a symmetric vertex sharp wave in the central region. In the last four seconds of this epoch, a spike with after coming slow showed up in the right temporal region, followed by left temporal myogenic artifact. The patient woke up with significant movement artifact 10 seconds after the spike. During these 10 seconds, we don't see much information on localization or lateralization. Subsequent EEG showed diffuse myogenic artifacts and movement artifacts throughout these ICTO events. Here we can see the EEG gradually returns to baseline with posterior dominant rhythm of alpha range. So, to summarize the evaluation so far, we see a violent and bizarre movement semiology during sleep. In total EEG, there are spikes at the right temporal region. Without medication reduction, the frequency is rare. In ito EEG, it showed excessive myogenic artifact that made it hard to lateralize, but there is a possible epileptogenic foci at the right temporal region with ito tachycardia. Conclusion: This is a focal motor seizure, hyperconnected, with impaired awareness, focus to be determined. This is the end of my case sharing in the familiar hyperconnected seizures. Thank you for your attention.